But religion is really what I want to talk about. Because, and philosophies as well, because philosophy of religion, religion and philosophy, they're two words that are both different um, in spelling. But um, I th I'm not religious, but I think that, um, you know, religion's a bunch of collection of ideas, and, and no, uh, philosophy's a collection of ideas, but religion is also, I feel, a collection of ideas, but with a mystical God who is above. It's always above, never to one side. Never say, God is, of course, over there. Yeah. Because there are people who would go and look behind the head and say, what, well, this is God? And they say, well, whoever there is God. Ooh, it's a duck. <laughs> are you God? Uh, yes. <laughs> Quack. Show me a miracle. Quack. <laughs> okay. It's a duck. Um, Jesus, he was a, a religious kind of guy. Um, <laughs> well, was he religious? No, not religious, mate. No, way. Okay. Anyway, he was... He was he had some interesting ideas. I, I look at him as a sort of Gandhi figure, because I'm not really into religion. Um, I'm not a religious person. I'm, I'm interested in the ideas. And he said, relax, be groovy, have big beards, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then people killed him, and his ideas split into many different areas. And, um, and then it quite often, his ide people's ideas can be twisted into bad things, like, like, like uh, the Spanish Inquisition. I don't seem to remember Jesus ever advocating the Spanish Inquisition, you know. I don't remember what Jesus said, you know, in a parable. And man, he does have two sons. To one son, he give land and goats and, and, and geese. To his other son, he does stretch him out an enormously long leg <laughs> on a rack and then ask him questions in a Spanish language. <laughs> you know, it just got totally twisted away. And um, Jesus, for me, big beards, loose flowing clothing, because it was quite clammy out there. Uh, <laughs> He wore flip-flops on his feet because he was a kind of, you know, a sort of a fashion guy. And, um, and he was Jesus, you know. And he never moved very fast, did he? It was a hot country and he knew that flip-flops are dangerous at fast speeds. <laughs> if you buy flip-flops, on the bottom is it, the size that says 40, yeah? And that's actually the speed that you can go... <laughs> ...in flip-flops. I just thought of that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it implies slightly for fucking forty months. I think they'd be off. Um, yes, so, yeah, true. And he never, if you read the Bible, it never, he never moved very fast in the Bible. If you read it, it never says, and Jesus shifted down the hill at high speed. <laughs> or things like, Jesus did turn to his disciples and say, quick, Scarpa, it's the Rosas. And, <laughs> and they did Scarpa down the hill. And they did Scarpa Jesus to drop his flip-flop and go... And then Jesus would drop his another flip-flop and say, Jesus, H, Christ! H for Herbert. And all the other disciples would drop their flip-flops. Simon Peter would drop his, and Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. And all the English disciples dropped their flip-flops, basically. All the ones from Oxford who were out from a fishing trip. And uh, even Judas, a local lad, dropped his flip-flop. It could have been on purpose, though. I'm not sure about that one. And then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, No, curl your toes at the end of your flip-flops. It really are. So Jesus, Lord, it is a miracle, it is a miracle, the curly toad, the curly toad miracle keeps the flip-flop on. <laughs> and the Rosas who were the Romans followed behind at a fixed pace, and their flip-flops did not come off because they were attached all the way up to about here. <laughs> and that was why they ruled the world. <laughs> you must admit, there were never any great conquering nations that conquered the entire world with flip-flops. <laughs> have to be securely attached flip-flops. So as you go into battle and people go, oh, oh, God, hold on. oh, I'm dead. The Legion was moving forward at a fast pace and they all dropped their flip-flops all over the place. That's what happened, of course, to Napoleon at Waterloo. All the flip-flops. <laughs> Lost them there. Um, no, so yes, the Roman Romans were, were very well organised and very violent, and they went around the world conquering, you know, more, killing loads of people. And um, they, they invented the, the pokey pokey sword, non glamorous, the pokey pokey sword. That was their technique. Because all these other people had huge double bladed axes, and they'd go around going pokey 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 pokey. And then just go up to a, it's great because you go up to a, a big, huge Visigoth and say, You're a big, smelly goth, aren't you? And he'd go, Well, I'll get you for that. And he just goes, Oh, shit. Good point. 
They, they developed the first tank, years before tanks, they developed, uh, I think it's called the tortoise, which is the scariest tank. Um, they got all the platoon together and they'd all hold their shields on the outside and all the shields, all the shields around and she shields over the top as well. And then they'd all chug around like this with the pokey pokey swords on the outside. <laughs> pokey 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 pokey. And the people in the middle just didn't have to do anything. They just... <laughs> They could lift up and go, you're all a bunch of bastards. <laughs> I could take you all on. Hey, you, oh, you, oh, it's all broken up. Oh. <laughs> but Jesus, yes, groovy, and he, he was against, he was for change, wasn't he? He was for updating, which is really weird with, with today, people saying, don't change anything. Just what Jesus said, he said, come along and change everything, because the Pharisees were the people who run the, th the show at the time here, right? And they said, um, the Pharisees said, you've got to talk to God through us, because we've got the big hats and stuff. And um, Jesus was against them, and he was against the, the hypocrites as well. Do you remember the hypocrites? It used to feature in the Bible a lot. Says, and the hypocrites did come into town and just say, oh, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> And the people just say, but you told us to do this, you bloody hypocrites. Said, yes, thanks, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks for noticing. <laughs> who are the hypocrites? A lot of people who are uh, duty bound to go and say, what a stupid idea. It's your idea. Thanks very much. <laughs> it's your idea, you bloody hypocrite. Thank you very much. It's my religion. <laughs> Hypocrisy is a religion. Anyway. So Jesus did talk. He talked to his people. And he did miracles, didn't he? The, the walking on water. The fishes and loaves, the water into wine, and the socks into sugar. <laughs> socks into sugar was hushed up, rather, of course, um, for the people who were there, assembled one day, and they said, Jesus, we have no sugar for our coffee, what shall we do? And Jesus said, no problem, see my socks, pow! And they were sugar. And the people did say, uh, actually, um, well, we're all trying to cut down anyway, Jesus. Appreciate it, appreciate it. But, um, oh, I've spilled my, I've spilled my, oh, we've all spilled ours all at once, oh, oh, so, all right, anyway, appreciate that, but, um, uh, next time, another time, thanks. And he talked in parables, and he wanted people to work out what he was talking about, so he, he would tell them stories, and the people would say, this is a bit confusing, can you just tell us, Ten Commandments, yeah, they're much here, Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, tell us all the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, and he says, oh, all right, all right, I'll tell you the Ten Commandments at bedtime. Um, and the Ten Commandments are much more simple, they were just direct laws. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not do eight other things. <laughs> thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's ox as one, yeah? Because um, uh, your neighbour would come in and say, where's my bloody ox? <laughs> Whose tarpaulin is it? <laughs> What's my ox doing under this tarpaulin? <laughs> do you cover my ox? <laughs> I'm your neighbour. You shall not cover the neighbor's ox, saith the Lord. It was the comedy commandment, wasn't it? <laughs> but Moses was down the hill with the nine commandments, and God said, no, just hold on a second there. Um, um, Moses, if you could. I just got one more commandment. This is a sort of comedy light relief thing. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox, brackets, blankets, or top, all in, etc. There you go. Good luck. Well done. And Moses said, oh, thanks. Because I can't do chart this time. Um, oh, thanks, yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah. So he said he told parables. He said, I say to you, a man, he doth have two sons. To one son, he doth give land and fish and goats and milk and cheese and eggs and bananas. Lots of stuff from a supermarket, okay? And to his other son, he doth give him only a tangled slinky. <laughs> I say to you, it is easier for the first son to go to the kingdom of heaven than it is for the second son to untangle their slinky. <laughs> The people would listen and go, oh, it's true, I've had a slinky, oh, it's a... have you heard what, yeah, it's tragic. Tell us another story, Lord, that one. I will tell you another story, I'll just, uh, go think of one. Okay, I've got one, I've got one. This is a great one, you love this one, right? uh, A man, he doth have eight sons, to one son he doth give the other seven. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, I got it. Oh, there we go. Two men doth go into a pub, and, um, oh, God. oh, look, just smoke this, you'll understand. Oh, I see. And they were relaxed and groovy people, there, and they did sit around the, the bonfire of a night going, oh, oh, wish we had a guitar. 
But religions are still linked into schools. Schools actually have a religion, which is really weird. Schools should teach all religions and all philosophies, all the positive, groovy ones, so you could pick and choose as a child. And it's a choice, that's the good thing. But I went to one that had the Anglican faith, the Church of England, built into it. And I said, well, Vicar, this comes from, from Jesus' ideas. Explain how you've distilled his ideas into Church of England. He said, well, Jesus was big beards, relaxed, big groovy, talk to God. And we've got it down to a mumbling in cold buildings. How about that? <laughs> wow, bang on target.